Sometimes we might think that getting an entry-level role should not require experience, but this is not the reality in 2023. Most companies are asking for hands-on experience. Certainly, it is a tough job market out there, and we need to adapt in order to succeed. Especially if we're trying to transition into a new role in the tech industry as a product manager, we must first understand the fundamentals and then start creating our own experience. In this video, we're going to first understand the basics of a product manager in the most simplified way, step by step, and I'll be showing you a side project that I have been working on that I can provide you with tons of references and get you started on your product journey. Stick until the end so you can understand the process and I will be also be providing some useful resources out there. But before learning about these steps, I just want to give a very brief explanation of what a product manager is. Of course, there are tons of video ready explaining it in a very detailed fashion. So I will just summarize it. Product management is a process of developing, launching, and managing a product or service, whether it is physical or digital. In this case, we're focusing on the digital side of things. First of all, as the first step as an aspiring product manager is to understand the whole process of what the product development cycle is. The product management process consists of a number of steps needed to take a product from the initial concept to launch. For example, market research all the way to user research, idea validation, design, prototype, product development, all the way we get to MVP release, which is actually getting your first version out and then afterwards collecting some feedback and then creating another version again over and over. To make things easier to understand, we're going to narrow these into one of the projects that I'm currently working on. So first step, market research and user research. This means defining a clear problem. One simple way to define a clear problem is to brainstorm your own personal pain points. Pick a problem you want to solve, do some research and build a solution. For example, productivity challenges. Explore common productivity challenges in various industries and roles. This could lead to the development of the tools or software that streamline processes. Or for example, you can think about time management, research the time, management struggles, such as prioritization, scheduling, goal setting. You could develop an app or system to help better individuals manage their time. Health and wellness, for example, that's my favorite one. Look into health and wellness concerns like stress management. You can think about fitness or nutrition. For in the end, you can create a solution that supports people in maintaining a healthier lifestyle like losing weight or gaining muscle. Choosing a problem in the end that you're currently facing helps you understand more with the what's going on with the end user. You can also can make your solution more relatable and you can resonate with users who share the same pain points. I recently worked on a project from scratch and from the beginning, we brainstormed different ideas, ranging from a book club to improving payment features on transportation to improving safety when traveling in the night. Once we have chosen a problem space, we need to validate it. And this brings me to the second point, which is validating the problem space. Some typical ways to figure this out are through secondhand research and first-hand research, through interviews and surveys, and finding out if there are other existing solutions. A practical way to put all of this into practice is to document everything in a research plan and write supporting evidence. Surveys and interviews could be done by asking questions, specifically targeting the problem you want to solve and could be gathered both online and in person. Typically for these, you could use the power of social media like LinkedIn and also reach out to friends and family. Personal project. Since we're just building a personal project, just having some validation from our group of friends or professional network is more than enough. In my case, I reached out to some of my close friends and also posted it on LinkedIn. Once you've done enough research, you could start thinking about the third step, which is designing and prototyping. On a side note, typically a product designer would be in charge of this, but as a PM, I recommend it is always important to understand the design process. In fact, this additional skill will help you become more valuable and improve your overall skill set. If you're stuck and design by any means is not your forte, the best way is to research resources of inspiration such as Dribble, which is actually a website that shows different portfolios of other designers, or even checking out apps on the App Store that is relevant to what you're trying to make. Just like the book Still Like an Artist, which mentions that creativity is not about starting from scratch, but actually about remixing, adapting, and building upon existing ideas. So in other words, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Once you have found your inspiration, consider apps such as Figma or Balsamic 
to create your mockups or wireframes. Typically in this step, when you work with bigger teams, you would get technical specifications, road mapping, and prioritization. But since you're making a personal project, you don't need to worry about this. Personal project. In the end, we decided to pursue creating a C2C or customer-to-customer -customer travel app, and our main source of inspiration came from Uber and other sharing apps. This is an example of an initial design of the project we were working on created via Figma. Remember, you really have to reinvent the wheel. Once we have an additional design, we can work with a simple iteration, get some user feedback, and keep working on our design until we can get from all the way from lo-fi to final design. And then we, that brings me to the next step, which is development. You can start thinking about creating an app with two options at the moment. So number one, you can think about looking for or working with software developers or code it, make it on your own by using a Node Code App Builder. It helps build mobile applications without writing code, and that's the good thing about this. It also uses visual tools and drag and drop interfaces, and there are apps such as Bubble and Softer you can consider. Personal project. I was personally collaborating with a team made of a product designer and software developers. I'll be sharing the outcome with everybody towards the end of this video. Also, in a future video, I plan to create an app using a Node Code app and share my experience on how it works in more detail. You could consider making your app come to life also by digging into your network and asking some of your friends. Developers that could be really interested can be those who are looking to gain more experience and this could be very valuable for them too. Or you can try buy them some pizza. Once you get the app done, then it's about releasing your first version of your app or MVP release. The biggest benefit of developing an MVP is that it allows you to gather feedback and build an improved version. This also provides the opportunity to challenge a product's direction in a good way. Within our time constraint, which was eight weeks, we were able to release our main feature of the app. In the end, we named our app Safe Journey, which is an app that connects solo travelers to safer local public transportation at their destination. Verified users with similar routes can partner up, share real-time updates, and coordinate through secure chats. This fosters security, companionship during nighttime commuting. Well, actually this sounds like an ad, but that was the description that actually we decided to write in the end as a team. The MVP that we released versus the final design clearly shows that we can still improve, but our plan is to gather feedback and keep working on improving the app. Conclusion. Now that we know the fundamentals, just remember that we don't really have to overcomplicate ourselves. As long as we find a problem space we're currently facing or we are passionate about, it's about just making sure if other people are having the same challenges and hopefully it is a sizable number. In the end, by creating your own experience, employers will value the initiative you're taking and you can share this experience too. I'm sure if you understand these steps, creating an application or an app will be a walk in the park and will guide your way to improve your skills and actually land a job. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave any comments below. And if you want to learn about other ways to get more experience as a product manager with zero experience, click on this video. See you soon.